I think there's things in the final mo finished movie that sort of surprise and impress now that in a sense we finished it and you can watch it, we can watch it as audiences and not just producers. Um, I think that Errol got really touched the humanity of the essential humanity of our dad. I think that in as a testament to the conversation, our father talks very much more comfortably than I saw him talk even really in person about his own creative process, about where story was born from, obviously from his father and his childhood, but also more immediate sense, the way he drew character from the world around him. Hey guys, how are you doing? Which one is Daniel and which one is Shabazz? I'm Daniel. And I'm Shabazz. Hi, lovely to meet. I'm Stephen and this is Simon. I'm Simon. And this is Steven. <laughs> lovely, to lovely to meet you both. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking your time to sit in the movie podcast. We were so captivated, by the way, how Errol told your father's story. And congratulations on the release. Well, thank you so much. We also are captivated and we love the movie. That's wonderful. And, you know, we have to imagine that you are very protective of your father's work. So I, we're curious, what was it about Errol's approach of telling your father's story that made both of you want to be part of this project? Well, I, I think Errol was a filmmaker that our dad had much admired, and, and of course we'd much admired for a, a very long time. So um, I, I think when Errol got in touch, um, you know, that was, that, that was not an opportunity you were going to rush to say no to. I mean, that's a pretty extraordinary thing. Um, so uh, that, that was, was one piece of it. Um, and I think our, our dad was, was ready for a conversation like that as well. You know, he'd reached a, a point in his life where he was reflecting back on things and, and, you know, and he'd loved Errol's movie, The Fog of War, where Robert McNamara looks back on his, uh, his life and, and, uh, you know, I think, I think our, uh, our dad liked the idea of, having that kind of conversation i mean i don't i don't think he knew he was dying necessarily but uh, he, or or that death was approaching so fast but uh at the same time he wanted to talk at a time when he could still do that very coherently i mean so it 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 was a very organic decision in the end that's wonderful and it, it truly is such a, a a beautiful story and just a wonderful legacy uh, to leave behind. So yeah, we, it's, we are just truly just captivated by it. Well, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. Is there is there something that surprised both of you when Errol kind of began diving into your father's story? I think there's things in the final mo finished movie that sort of surprise and impress now that in a sense we finished it and you can watch it. We can watch it as audiences and not just producers. Um, I think that Errol... Got, really touched the humanity of the essential humanity of our dad. I think that in as a testament to the conversation, our father talks very much more comfortably than I saw him talk even really in person about his own creative process, about where story was born from, obviously from his father and his childhood, but also more immediate sense, the way he drew character from the world around him. Um, and I think that Errol was also able to tap into the fun of our father, the comedy, the moments of humor. Um, and that, you know, despite often the fact that he wrote books that in some ways became very bleak, you know, that had the, the people die and that there's, there's not a lot of hope in their resolution, that actually he was someone that really loved, that was a very, was a real, uh, of a very humanist person, right? He loved to connect with individuals. He he had, in a way, despite himself, great faith in in the capacity of love and connectivity, and that he really loved to enjoy. He enjoyed people, and you can feel in the movie when you're watching it on screen that connectivity. He reaches the audience. He's speaking directly to you. He's really interested by the conversation by Errol and its extension by the world around him. Definitely. You see that with the, with the approach and also the way that, you know, your father's answering all the questions, there's a lot of just honesty and still some 
uh, sort of holding back, I guess, which yeah. is, you know, natural for him. <laughs> yes, I, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think our, our, our dad's a, a storyteller. He, he instinctively wants to control the narrative. Um, I think, you know, I think some of the beauty of this is, is both that Errol broke through that in some places, but also that our dad felt comfortable enough talking to Errol that that he himself said things that he hadn't said before or in ways he hadn't said them before. So um it was it was lovely. Yeah, and I think especially when you start to open, you know, you reflect back on on this this legacy and you you start to open up. Yeah, I think it's nice when you have those moments where like, oh, it's a bit more candid. And I, I'm curious for both of you, what's been the most rewarding parts of producing and adapting your father's works for film and for television? I mean, I, 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 I think generally, um, what what I find thrilling is, you know, the process of taking his books, which you know, it, it, they were the the published books, the finished books. I mean, he never really finished his books in his head, but at some point he chose to publish them as completed stories. And you know, when when we take on an adaptation, um, that's that story suddenly then becomes the starting point for a whole new journey. And and that's that's thrilling, you know, and it's thrilling whether you take the story into the present, into the world we're living in today, or whether you do an adaptation that's sort of a period adaptation, but where you're inevitably asking the question, well, why am I telling this period story now? What does it have to it that speaks to the world we're living in. So I I, I think that for me is the most fun. Uh, on this particular movie, I think the best bit for me has been watching it with an audience that uh, when, when it's finished, because um, it's just wonderful to feel the engagement in the room, um, which of course, when you're watching endless cuts through the production process, you know, you're mesmerized by it, but you never get the sense of how people are relating to it until you see it in a room with an audience. And I think, you know, part of also what, you know, which is common to this movie and the other adaptations and the adaptations we've done and will be doing is that our father was very, audience readership was very important to him, right? And being relevant and resonant with the readership. And I think particular the beauty of adaptation and to some extent this movie it's the ability to touch an audience that he might not otherwise reach, right? To to be able to celebrate right. the audience that is already there for him, but also to bring him and his stories to people that might not otherwise find them or discover them. And and that's a very exciting thing to be able to do. And it's very relevant to who he was as a person because he really he lived so much in the moment and and his readership and audience were very important to him in a very genuine way. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And we can't wait for more people to see this. Thank you both so much for taking your time with us well, today. Thank you thank so much. Thank and, you. And, uh, and good <laughs> luck with everything. Fun to talk thank to you, you both. You.